Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to the new specialization trailer for Broken Arrow. This is a game I'm so much looking forward to. I think it's finally going to be a worthy replacement for Wargame. Wargame just had about its ninth birthday, and, uh, well, we're due for a replacement, and honestly, Warno isn't it. Broken Arrow, as far as I'm concerned, is it. And especially this new trailer just shows you how much you can customize and how exactly that works. So I thought I'd do a quick video showing you the trailer first and then giving my thoughts on it. So let's move ahead and go and show you the trailer. Broken Arrow features more than 300 units and over 1,500 possible customizations for these units, resulting in thousands and thousands of combinations. All of these possibilities are regrouped in our deck creation system called the Army Builder. Select a nation and two specializations out of the four proposed. Here, we select USMC and Armored. Each specialization contains a unique roster of units, resulting in six unique Battlegroups archetypes. Name your deck and you are ready for the next step. This is the overview of your deck. There are six categories, each containing an amount of slots. You also have a limit of value per category and for the entire battle group. Let's jump into the air category. Double click or drag and drop a unit to fill one slot. You can repeat the process or click the plus and minus buttons to adjust the quantity you want. Note that each vehicle you add costs some points. Once you're out of points in this category, you cannot add more units. On the right side of the screen, you can see the statistics panel displaying all the characteristics of the unit as well as its customization options. Let's customize this plane. For each pair of pylons, we can select a loadout. Bombs, rockets, missiles. Create the combination of your choice. Of course, this has an impact on the value of the unit, so choose carefully. Let's head to the infantry category. Here you must select infantry squads as well as the transport that will bring them on the battlefield. You are not forced to select a transport, but if you do so, they will arrive on the battlefield on foot unless you add an independent transport to your deck, like a cargo plane to airdrop your troops. That's it. Once you've filled your deck with all the units you need, it's time to head for the battlefield. Looks great, right? Being able to customize your unit to exactly how you want it. I love the look of this. Now, what we have with the war game system is you basically get a whole bunch of different units. They say we have about, I think, 2,000 different units. And this is, well, it's not inaccurate because they got a ton of different units. But you had like 15 or 20 or, I don't know, 30 different variations of the T-72. This game just basically is going to go, no, we got one T-72, and you can customize it with armor and weaponry as you see fit. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a T-72, but that's the example. This way, you can very much customize exactly how you want that unit to be. And I think, as they said in the trailer, there are actually this way more different customizations than you can have with Wargame, especially when it comes to all the different loadouts on the planes. Now, when it comes to the customization system, first you pick a specialization. You're going to that way get more points in that particular category. If you're coming from Wargame, it used to be that you had more or fewer slots, but it also used to mean that you had access or didn't have access to certain units. This game does it different. And it says, hey, your unit is going to cost X amount of points. If you customize it further, it's going to change again. 
And by adding a specialization, you're basically adding a number of points. So you're sort of adding a number of slots, but let's say that adding a couple thousand points to a different category doesn't mean you're going to get tons and tons more units that area. Maybe you're going to get better quality units depending on how you customize them. And you can see it here when they hover over the armored brigade. It gives you a bunch more points in vehicles. It does not give you more points in helicopters and aircraft. It's always been a bit of the weak spot of armored groups, armored decks, if you will. They do need a lot more air support in order not to have those precious vehicles get destroyed. So you're going to get additional points in vehicles. Um, you're probably going to have to make up for that with additional points in support to make sure that the enemy air force doesn't threaten your ground units. This does make me really curious to see if you can make armored and airborne combinations. And it's right there on the screen. The answer is yes. You can have a VDV armored combination. So you can have, I don't know, a focus on maybe airborne infantry or helicopters and aircraft and vehicles. I suspect you might be lacking in recon a little bit when it comes to that. But you're going to have all sorts of different combinations. And whereas Wargame basically had nation plus customization or nation plus specialization, this game is going to make deck building, army building, uh, a whole different hobby. It's going <laughs> to give you so many different options. It's going to give you so many different play styles that you can customize not only the deck, but of course also the units to your heart's content. Um, back in Wargame, I used to do deck reviews. I think that's how I started the channel. And... Well, it was pretty straightforward. You had like Germany armored, Germany mechanized, Germany motorized. Um, this is going to be an entirely different ball game because you can just add and swap and change so much depending on your play style, depending on what sort of engagement you're planning to go into. Uh, 1v1, you might have a different type of battle group. You might have a more rounded battle group than if you're playing with your friends and somebody else can take up the, let's say, air support role or somebody can take up the armored role and you're providing the infantry. So it's going to have so many different options and that really makes me very happy because I think that is going to give this game such a long, long, long lifespan. There's so much customization, I don't think it'll ever get boring. Uh, there might be a meta that develops at some point, like, yeah, uh, USMC plus Air Mobile that you can see here is really good. Uh, no, 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 dude, you don't need the VDV armored, it doesn't work. I think we can have a lot of different interesting discussions about how, what combinations work well, uh, why you don't want to pick those two. And I don't know, maybe for tournaments you're going to find some entirely different combinations that work very well because the enemy doesn't expect it. Now this next bit in the video showed the army builder with all the points they have available. So the USMC armored combination that they picked gives you a ton of vehicle points. Um, it is a little light on helicopters potentially because you got only 750 points. And again, it's not, you're gonna add 2000 units. You're gonna add a bunch of different units worth up to 3000 points under vehicles or 2000 points under infantry, which is, as far as I know, a pretty novel system. And I like the look of it because you can go, you know what, um, in this particular deck, I only really need one helicopter. Uh, or maybe like two helicopters of the same type, and I'm going to customize them and make sure that they're absolutely filling up the tank killer role so that I can very quickly respond to an armored breakthrough somewhere. Next, they go into the plane selector, and this is where you can see all of the customization in its glory. It's going to be fantastic. You can add so many different combos, so many different, even armor, sorry, not armor, um, camo schemes to make these really your units. On the top right hand side you see the F-18 Hornet or the Harrier and the amount of money slash points that's going to cost you to add that unit. So a different loadout is going to make it more expensive or cheaper as they said in the video. And I do expect that sometimes you might need two different types of combinations such as a laser rangefinder or a laser designator and then a laser guided missile. This here in particular is what I'm talking about. You've got a designation pod for 25 points. And then you also have the option of adding a LJ dam. Now, there might be infantry or different types of vehicles that might also get a laser designator. But what has me really interested is 
can I have one, let's say, fairly cheap, maybe extremely longevity plane, so a plane with a later designator and a bunch of fuel tanks, loiter around the area, and then have a different plane come in with the laser-guided bombs? Would that work? If it does, that is, once again, going to open up a whole different set of options for you to play around with. Now, do take note that these things add up the price point of these planes really, really quickly. You had a thousand points, you're already paying 305 points for one of these planes. One Harrier, armed to the teeth, to be sure, is worth 305 points now. The infantry tab is probably where you'll be spending a lot of your time customizing. You'll be picking the infantry, which is probably the easy choice, and then pick what sort of transport they're going to come in with. Do you want something really quick, something light, something fast that's going to be able to drop off your, let's say, dragon troops fast in the form of a Humvee? Or do you want a mechanized engineers group to come in with an M2A3 Bradley? The price tag for the Bradley alone is 100 points. And that is without any type of further customization that you can do. Picking the exact armor as well as armaments that you're thinking is probably the best combination to go with said mech engineers. So you'll be spending probably a lot of time here um, making sure that the units in your particular infantry tab do exactly what you need them to do and have the exact type of reinforcements and the exact type of fire support from their vehicles that you need. Note how you can also customize the role of your infantry. Do you want them to be more standoffish or do you want them to be door kickers? This is going to give you even more to think about. You might have a specific squad of, let's say, marines that are specifically designed and equipped to be door kickers. So they're going to go in first, they're going to knock the door down, they're going to clear a building for you. And then potentially mech engineers are going to be more standoffish. You do not want to have them in direct combat. Now take note of the amount of points that this combination cost. This is 8 units of mechanized riflemen plus an M1283 AMPV for 95 points. You're already looking at 820 out of your 2000 allotted points. So you might have a squad of specialized, let's say, door kickers, as the example I give. Um, but is that going to be worth it? In the sense that your deck is now a bit more specialized, it's less flexible. Is that what you want? Is that going to be the best option? I think with this game, there are going to be not necessarily bad options, just far less than optimal. In the sense that you might have door kickers that work very, very well in one particular battle. And then the next you find, well, I didn't use those at all. Does that mean that they still have a place in your army, in your deck? Uh, it's entirely up to you. You might consider, well, yeah, they did serve me so well that one time. I'm going to keep them around. I'm going to make sure that they stay in the deck. And maybe after five battles you go, well, didn't work out too well. And then again, if you're playing with your friends in maybe a 4v4 or even something bigger, and you have just an entire player's deck full of door kickers, so you can go town to town, door to door, building to building, that might work out very well. But again, if you're taking that deck into a 1v1, it might not. So you're probably going to have not just one, two, three decks that you play. Um, I'm thinking 10 to 15, depending on the situation that you face. Here you can see the build of the deck in its entirety. I am interested in seeing the Marine Raiders, which do not have a transport. And this probably means that they can get uh, brought in by the Osprey, the Venom, or the Super Saiyan. So you have options. And this is also something that was shown in the demo. You could bring in a specific type of infantry in various different transports, depending on your needs. Something else I wanted to highlight here is that you can see that they're not entirely maxed out on all the points. You got 1965 out of 2000 for infantry, you got 2930 for 3000 in vehicle tab. I think making sure that you use and squeeze out every single point of a particular segment is going to be, again, a pretty big time sink. You can spend a lot of time going, oh, I got 65 points here, I got 70 points out there, I can spend... Uh, yeah, no, I do want that better machine gun, or I'm going to give that tank that better armor package. And again, you might even find in battle that that 60 points that the unit is more expensive is going to mean it's going to come in like not one minute later, but two minutes later, and the battle will have shifted. And you're going to go, oh, crap, I should have had that thing a minute or two ago. 
So again, trade-offs. How expensive are your units? How are you going to fill the decks? And how are you going to make these things work exactly to your playstyle? Now we close off with some eye candy. This is the fully customized Harrier. And the cinematics look great. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this every single time, like that pop-up window where you can actually see the Harrier doing its rocket pilot run. Um, would be great. I don't think it's going to be feasible. I think that's something that they added it in. Take note of how the Viper is armed and also quickly ducks behind a building, seemingly with the press of one button. Now, there was talk of also being able to customize up to a point how quickly and with what your units defended themselves. I'm not sure if that is still a thing, because that Viper seemed to be popping defensive measures all by itself. So that's how Broken Arrow is shaping up. I can't wait to play this, and yet I think we're going to have to wait a little longer, because I believe that they're targeting a release for Q1 2024, with potentially a new beta coming up sometime in November. But that's hearsay. I don't know exactly if that's going to be true. I really hope it is, so I can show you more of the game and that we can potentially play it together. Again, I really look forward to having a different game to Wargame, because ever since Wargame slash Warno, there's been a gap in this niche, as far as I'm concerned. And I really hope that Broken Arrow fills that gap and jumps into that gap as the new game that we can all play together. Now, please let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. I really look forward to seeing what your thoughts are on the customization, uh, whether you think it's potentially too much, if it's too little, is there more that they should be customizing? I really look forward to seeing what you guys think about this new trailer and about the game as a whole. Thank you for watching. If there's more info, I'll definitely keep you updated. So if you're not subscribed, then please do. And well, again, look forward to seeing you guys soon in future videos.